when the instability of the world outside gets very obvious. That's when you appreciate having a refuge inside. Do you think of the time when the Buddha was about to pass away? He was the teacher that all those monks and nuns and laymen and laywomen had come to depend on. The one they'd gone to for refuge. Now he was going. And so he reminded them they should make themselves their refuge. He recommended that they do that by de developing the establishings of mindfulness. We have to remember that those establishings of mindfulness are his instructions on how you get the mind into concentration. So for our internal refuge, we're trying to get the mind so it can settle down, be with the body as a whole. The problem is, as you settle down, it's like sitting in a chair. You find that under the seat cover there are objects. Some of them are sharp and pointy, and some of them are simply getting in the way. In other words, they're aches, pains, patterns of tension in the body. And it's the nature of the mind's early warning system that we focus on those first. But we have other potentials in the body as well. And John Lee made this comment several times in his writings, that we human beings have a lot of potentials both in the body and in the mind, and we hardly make any use of them at all. In some cases he was talking about the different psychic powers that can be developed as the mind settles in, but he's also talking about the potentials of the breath energy. And the number one principle of staying with the breath is that you focus on the comfortable breath. That refers both to the rhythm of the breath and to the parts of the body that you can make comfortable with the breath. Do your best not to focus directly on the pains, directly on the patterns of tension. Focus around them, between them. There are parts of the body that are perfectly okay. As John Lee once said, if the whole body were pain, you'd die. There's got to be something in here where you can get a sense of comfort, where you can settle in. And work around the pains, work around the solid parts that don't seem to respond to the breath. And remember not to use those parts of the body to breathe. You may notice this sometimes, that it's the tense parts of the body. It may be tense because you're using them to breathe. Or maybe that you're using them to breathe because as you focus on the body they seem to be those obvious parts there, so you use them to pump the breath in, pump the breath out. So change your perception. This is a lot of what's required in developing the potentials of the body, the potentials of the mind. So you change your perception of what's going on. And the first change is to remind yourself that the breath comes first. It's your primary experience of the body. Without the breath, you'd be paralyzed. Without the breath, you'd be totally numb. You wouldn't feel the body at all. We tend to have the perception that we first experience the solid parts of the body and then we pull the breath in. We use the solid parts to pull the breath in. You've got to change that perception. What you've got here is one big ball of breath energies. And at the moment they may be fighting among themselves. But when you realize that they are a breath, and they're not held in by the so solid parts of the body, because the solid parts come later, they can get more and more coordinated. And just that sense that comfortable breath energies in the body are coordinated, breathing in, breathing out. That right there can give you a good place to stay.
As for the parts that aren't responding immediately, well, you just don't focus on them. Focus around them. Focus in between them. And then ask yourself about that perception of their solidity. How solid are they? Are they, are they totally impregnable? Or are they more porous? Think of them as atoms. There's space between the atoms, there's space in the atoms. Why can't the breath go through? Think of the breath as being even more subtle than the atoms. And it doesn't stop with the skin. There's a cocoon of breath energy around the body. You can use that perception to help, so that when you're breathing in, the breath can come in anywhere, the pores of the skin in any part of the body, and they can mingle and then come back out again. And John Fu once recommended that one way of conceiving the breath coming in is that there's a pole of energy going from the top of the head down through the head, down through the torso down to the base of the spine. Then as you breathe in, the energy is coming into that pole of energy from all directions. And as you breathe out, it goes out in all directions. So what you're doing is you're learning how to play with your perceptions, but play in a purposeful way, like an athlete playing a, a sport. You're not just playing around. You're playing to win, but you're also playing to enjoy while you're doing it. And as you play, you learn. This is where Wimang Sa comes in, one of the bases of success. On the one hand, it means your powers of analysis. You work with the breath, and then you look at the results you're getting, and then you ask yourself, are these as good as they can be? And if they're not, then you have to ask yourself, what could be better? And one aspect of Weibang Sa is another Pali term called Bhatipana. Your ability to innovate, your ability to imagine. Bring that to bear. You can borrow some of John Lee's imaginings. You can borrow some of mine. But they should stimulate you. What about your own? Because of the way we relate very directly to our breath energies in the body. It's something very personal, very individual. And because we don't talk about it that much, we tend to be pretty deprived in terms of our vocabulary, in terms of our sense of what can be done here. So learn how to verbalize to yourself what's going on in terms of your relationship to the breath energy. And ask yourself some questions like this, which is prior, the breath or the earth? And what could you do to make the breath prior, or to be in touch with the fact that the breath is prior? And then from there, ask yourself other questions that make it more and more possible to adjust the energies in the body, adjust the things under the seat covers in the body. So you can sit down here and take your seat. That's how the skills of breath meditation become your own. In Thai they have a pun around the word bhatibhat. To bhati about something means to practice it, but to bhati about a person means that you would look after the person, serve his or her needs. 
And as they often say, when you're when you bhati bhat the Dharma, you're also you also bhati bhat yourself. If you practice the Dharma, you're looking after yourself. And so you want to be able to settle down right here, because after all, this is going to be your refuge. You look outside, the world's pretty dismaying. You look inside, and it's also dismaying at times. But it doesn't have to stay that way. You have the potential for refuge right here, the potential for pleasure, rapture. After all, those are steps in the breath meditation. Breathing in, breathing out, sensitive to pleasure, breathing in, breathing out, sensitive to rapture. Okay, there are potentials there. Look for them. Learn how to develop them. And that's how you become your own refuge. <laughs>